Greetings all, Last Outrider here, bringing you another video, Rise of the Black Legion. And this one will contain a lot of surprises for you Chaos Worshippers out there. When the Sons of Horus entered the Eye of Terror, they found a realm of madness, where the rules of the material galaxy no longer applied. Almost at once, the traitor legions fell upon each other in bitter conflicts and petty wars, as each Primarch and Warlord struggled to carve out a piece of this deadly realm for themselves. The Sons of Horus had reached the Eye of Terror with the bloodied survivors of the Scouring. But the once mighty legion was reduced to a fraction of its former size, led only by a few remaining captains. The legion struggled with its loyalty to their fallen Primarch, and the cold reality that their defeat at the hands of the Emperor and his lackeys was real. Around them, many of the traitor legions still clung to their ancient traditions and oaths, trying desperately to seek out order despite the insanity of their existence in a galaxy that had turned against them. Other legions embraced chaos utterly, surrendering both their minds and bodies to its corrupting effects and forever abandoning everything that they had once been. The traitor legions turned upon each other, and many even fragmented completely as captains became warlords and forged their own warbands from the disillusioned warriors around them. Hungry for power and blood, the traitors butchered their kin with warp-sharpened blades and demonic sorceries. In a sea of gore and greed, the glories of the heresy were forgotten, and a new chapter of carnage has begun. Meanwhile, the dark gods subverted and manipulated their new playthings, reshaping the legions for their own ends and the ever-changing war between the gods. Abaddon abandoned the Legion. Broken by the death of Horus and sick of war, he wandered alone into the Eye of Terror. Meanwhile, the sons of Horus carried the body of their Primarch, preserved in stasis, into the eye, ignoring the wars that raged around them. Even so, the siren song of demons and the whispers of gods dogged their journey as they pressed on, seeking a resting place for their master. Filled with rage, and humiliation at the destruction and decay that had been wrought upon them, scores of battle brothers began to be changed by the corrupting touch of chaos. Little by little, their souls eroded and their minds were poisoned by darkness. The tomb of Horus on Maelseum, a graveyard world of steel and rust, the sons of Horus raised a fortress surrounded by living darkness and the bones of dead warp dragons. It was fashioned from the wrecks of decaying vessels long lost to the warp with each spire and tower made from the jagged prow of an ancient ship. The legion interred Horus's body within a great tomb where many fell into worship of their fallen demigod. 
the war master's body hung, suspended in a spiraling chamber of bone white stone, bathed in flickering gold light. His perfect form looking down upon his sons. Reaching up as far as the eye could see, the deeds of Horus were carved into the arching crypt walls, each one depicting a great battle or glorious victory. Each day, the worshippers would gather in the shadow of their Primarch and offer up their oaths anew, unable and unwilling to find a new leader. With their Primarch dead, and their legion on the verge of extinction, the sons of Horus slowly stagnated. How's that? Like many of the other traitor legions, the sons of Her Horus suffered from the incessant demonic attacks during their early years within the Eye of Terror. There was a never-ending tide of demons to fight off, and many who were not slain fighting the creatures directly fell to the uncontrollable influence of chaos, losing their minds and bodies to possession. They tried to master the art of possession, binding the warp entities to their flesh intentionally, whilst maintaining control of their minds. Through bitter trial and error, the Legion's psychers were able to protect the warriors from the worst of the Immaterium's effects, preserving their psyches against the reckless insanity inherent in touching the warp. Even so, many Space Marines were left as little more than ruined and gibbering meat by the attempts, and the capricious nature of chaos saw many more killed outright. Some within the Legion argued that the sons of Horus should offer their allegiance to a single power rather than deal with demons of many gods. Most, however, warned that the Legion should never bow to an outside power again. They remembered too well the yoke that the Emperor placed around the neck. Now, I'm going to take this moment right here to break off and go on to a little bit about the Luna Wolves. Actually, there's a little bit here. I'm just going to finish that. And then I'm going to talk about the Luna Wolves, because how can you know what the Black Legion or Sons of Horus are unless you know who the Luna Wolves are? Let me see. Oh, I just left off a sentence. Uh, they remembered too well the yoke that the Emperor had placed around the neck of the Legion and were wary of letting another master hold such power over them. Okay. Anyways, the, the, the Luna Wolves, which is what the, the Legion was called prior to finding Horus... The Luna Wolves were the 16th Legion of the First Founding. They fought with the Emperor from his early wars to unify Terra to the Great Crusade that gave life to his Imperium. Once reunited with their Primarch, the Luna Wolves were recruited from the vicious gangs of Chthonia, a world of ancient subterranean cities and rampant lawlessness. They quickly earned a fearsome reputation amongst the Legion's Astarde. Whilst all the Space Marines are bred for war and excel at battle, the Luna Wolves always strove to be better than their brother Legions, constantly pushing themselves towards perfection. If there was any chance at competition between the Emperor's armies, 
the Luna Wolves would try to come out on top. Whether it was beating another force for the capture of an objective or killing more of the foe than their brethren, it is speculated that this competitive aspect in their nature was a shadow of the ancient gang rivalry on Chthonia, kept alive by the ritual traditions of the Legion. Whatever the reason, the Luna Wolves earned a reputation as the foremost Legion and the favored warriors of the Emperor. And when they embarked upon the Great Crusade, they defended this, earning a great tally of victories for the Imperium. Hmm. Though they would be renamed the Sons of Horus, and then later the Black Legion, their inherent rivalry and quest for dominance over all others remains at the core of the Legion's heart to this day. I hope that's giving everybody a better idea of what the Black Legion is and also the fact that Abaddon wasn't always there. The first thing Abaddon did when they hit the Eye of Terror was just disappear. And you may now be asking, well, where did he go? What did he do? Why did he come back? And my answer will be, keep watching. Bye.